That's the only reason we're able to stand in this presence. That's the only reason he accepts my praise. That's the only reason that I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Because the blood was shed. Thank you, God. Amen tonight. Amen. God bless all of you. Thank God for all of you, my wife and family tonight, and all of you, people of the Most High God. I so appreciate you bringing in the sweet spirit tonight. I so appreciate you coming in hungry. And those that are hungry and thirsty after righteousness, you shall be filled. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. These words be I see the Lord. I see the Lord. It's a, Isaiah says, I see the Lord high and lifted up, and the train fills the temple. And we have to come to the place that we see the Lord. And I know you see evil, you see murdering, you see all of this stuff that's going on and people going crazy in this world. But you got to see the Lord high and lifted up. The train of his gone fills the tomb. Worthy is the Lamb.
will uh, turn to Matthew chapter number 6. Very familiar scripture. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 34. Amen. The Bible says in the 25th verse, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment or clothing? Is, is life more than food and clothing? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment or clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, somebody say things, all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow or tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And what he's saying in a nutshell is, I got you. I have you in my hand. I'm taking care of you. So no matter what anybody thinks about you, no matter what they try to take away from you, I got you. That's what God is saying. So what he's saying also is don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't wonder. Worry, if we, if we don't trust in the Lord, worrying is sin. Because that means we're serving a God that we can't trust. Why would I live holy and serve a God and, and honor a God and worship a God that I cannot trust? Come on now. Why would I do that? Why would I praise a God and, and live holy according to the word of God that's been written, a God that I cannot trust? I don't want to do it like that. Amen. If God says, I got you, then I'm going to rest well. Because he said, I got you. Let me have it. Let me handle it. No matter what's been said, no matter your past, I, I got you. Just let me have you and everything will be all right. But I think a lot of times we try to help God fix our situation. Put your tools up and let God handle it by himself. Amen. Amen. Because my tools normally turn into destruction and doubt. And I, may, I usually blow up what I'm trying to fix when I don't let God do it. When I don't let God work situations out and I get in it, I mess it all up. So, Jesus, you're going to have to take this one. Somebody said, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Because we get reckless sometimes. Amen. Sometimes riding down the road, you might get a little sleepy. You need Jesus and angels and everybody else to take the wheel. Amen. Jesus, take the wheel. You start hallucinating, seeing things, hitting brake when you ought to be hitting the gas. Jesus, come on somebody. Jesus, take the wheel. Amen. So in your spiritual walk with the Lord, that's what we need. We need Jesus to take the wheel. You know, you, you oh, I'm driving now. Look at me. No, you're reckless. Amen. We've been reckless. We've been doing things wrong. We've been praying wrong. We've been asking for wrong stuff. And we've been waiting on things that we want to happen. But I want to wait on the will of God to happen. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 9. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 9. Amen. Do you love the word of God? You can't love God without loving the word of God. Amen. The inspired letter written. Amen. By people who heard from God. And I believe it's the power, amen, and, and the faith in the word of God that gets the job done. 
The Bible says, Romans 8, verse 1 through 9, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who, which are in Christ Jesus, who what? Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Nobody can condemn you when you're walking after the spirit. When you're walking after the spirit, you're doing the things of the spirit and the things that God wants you to do. So nobody can condemn you. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. God sent his son, a sacrificial lamb, amen, the second man, Adam, so that I could be redeemed by the blood that was shed. Isn't that good? You couldn't have paid your own price. And when Jesus shows up on the scene, they didn't have to burn up another cow. Come on. They didn't have to kill another dove. They, they, they didn't have to do anything else. When Jesus showed up, they, they didn't have to have no smelly animals in the temple no more. They could get rid of the herds and all of that stuff when they came to the temple worship and the sacrifices offered up. Amen. Now my worship and my praise from clean lips are a sweet-smelling savor to, oh, I felt that one that time. Oh, come on, somebody. The incense to God is when you can lift holy hands and tell the Lord I thank you. The incense to God when you can lift holy hands after going through a hectic day and you still got a praise on your lip. That's an incense to God. The incense to God when you know you're doing all you know to do and you ain't living like everybody else and you ain't out here trying to do crazy stuff and you forgot about your past. You're not trying to live in the past. That's an incense. That's a fragrance to the Lord when you can lift your hands and say high praise, hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory. That's an incense to the Lord. Amen. Because you have a changed mind. Let them call you what they want. Let them call you holy roller. Let them call you crazy. Let them say them people don't do nothing but praise God and yell all the time. But hey, if I can, if I can yell after a ball or a basketball or football, certainly I can praise the name of the Lord for the one that created me, the one that hung, bled, and died for me, the one that gave me activity of my limbs, the one that stopped the enemy from taking me out. Do you hear what I'm telling you? When death came my way, angels showed up. You don't know what what you talking about tonight? Oh, come on, somebody. When death came your way, angels stepped in. Come on, when the medicine wouldn't work, God stepped in. Do you hear what I'm telling you tonight? Come on, give him glory right there. Because he's worthy to be praised. Oh. So there, there, there's, there's an incense. You don't, we ain't got to burn up cows no more. You ain't got to have turtle doves and and sacrificial animals and all of that stuff anymore. Because the ultimate sacrifice, it happened on over 2,000 years ago. And the veil in the temple, you don't have to go to the priest and the pope no more. Yo, come on, you can go to him on your own. He sits high, but he looks low. He holds the evil and the good. And not only that, let me give you one to run home with. He can dwell in you. Come on, somebody. He said, not only am I on you, but I can dwell in you. And now the good thing is, you can carry me everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, Let's, let's go down to the sixth verse, Romans 8, chapter, uh, chapter number 8, verse number 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And see, that's what the enemy does not want. He does not want you walking around with life and peace. See, some people think because they got stuff, they're living. No, you ain't living until you know who Jesus is. You're not living until he's dwelling on the inside. You're not living until you can pray in the wee hours of the morning and get up and keep on doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's living. When you got a prayer life, when you got a conscious mind to say, I know who Jesus is. When you got a conscious mind to depend on him and say, he is my healer. He is my everything. He is the one I lean on. When you got a conscious mind. What I love about it, I can follow him. And when I start following him, he starts following me. Don't you like it when, he, when he's following you too? I'm following him. I follow him first. He says, draw nigh to me, I draw 
grown out of you. So when I started following him, now I feel him following me. Don't you feel him? Everywhere you go, he'll be right there. If you go to the right places, if you hang out in the right places, if you're doing the right thing, if you're saying the right thing, the right words are coming out of your mouth. Come on, somebody. We got the hookup tonight. Because a carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh. Do you hear the word tonight? You're not in the flesh. You somebody. I'm trying to help build you up. You're not supposed to be in the flesh, walking in the, with a fleshly mind. You're supposed to have a spiritual mind. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We may have to do worldly things on our jobs and deal with worldly people, but on the inside, there's something going on. There's a spirit that's raising, saying, oh, let me out of here. Let me praise him. Come on. There should be a connection. You ought to feel some leaping in your belly when you get close around the, the presence of God. When you lift your hands and start praising the name of the Lord, when you hear other people praising God. It ought to make you want to praise God. When I hear testimonies about what he's already done, it makes me want to shout. It makes me want to talk about how good he is. Amen. But you are not in the flesh, but you're in the spirit. But in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you, now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's not his. If the spirit is dwelling in you, you ain't got to wonder, am I, do, am I, do I belong to God? If you got to ask if you belong to God and you say, then you're not. Hello? Lord, am I saved? No. That's like asking a pregnant woman, is she pregnant? You the first one ought to know. Huh? Am I right about it? Should nobody tell you, you know you pregnant? Oh, I didn't know that. You sitting way out here? Come on, something wrong. So when the glory shows up in your life, you will not be ignorant to what it is. You won't be singing, what is this? <laughs> you will know what it is. You won't be saying, what is this? Got me feeling so? No, you already know. I can tell you what it is. I ain't got to ask what is this. I know what it is. I know who I am, what it is. I know what's dwelling in me. Amen. Because of the Spirit of the Lord, I like myself. Because of the Spirit of the Lord, He has blessed my hands to do certain things. Because of the anointing and the grace of God, He has graced me to do what I do, to make a living so I can pay my bills. Amen. He has graced me with his presence so I can feel good about what I'm trying to do for him. Don't let nobody make you feel bad about what you're trying to do. I don't care if nobody ever tell you, great job, you keep doing what you're doing. Because I found out when I was in school taking a test. The teacher walks around while you take an exam, ain't saying nothing. They're not saying anything. While you might be the last one to finish, they, they never say nothing. Sometimes in life, the test you're dealing with, the teacher sometimes don't say nothing. Just giving you the grace to pass. Giving the grace, God, to make it through this test. Give me the grace. And in the body of Christ, you're not exempt. See, I, I envy some of the students' class. They, they didn't have to take no test. I'm exempt. You got hundreds all across your car. What you doing? I ain't got to come to school for three days. I'm exempt. I didn't like it. I wanted to be exempt. But I didn't have the academic skills to be exempt. I had to take the test. But in the body of Christ, nobody's exempt. While you're taking the test, Almighty God ain't saying nothing. Sometimes there is no word. You would love a word that would say, hold on, hang on in there, keep doing what you're doing. It ain't saying nothing. 
So this is what you have to know. When you can't go forward, suddenly don't go backwards. For God's sake, don't go backwards. Be still and know that he is the Lord. Amen. And because I love the Lord and I've made acquaintances, because you should make acquaintances in life, God put people here for other people. He had no intentions of you living in a world by yourself. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how good you look. He had no intention. I don't care how great an athlete you are or whatever, or whatever you can do or whatever you're able to do. He never intended for you to live in a world by yourself. So since I understand that I'm not in a world by myself, he's taught me to let other people love me. Did, did you hear me? See, if you don't let people love you, and one of the reasons you don't let people love you is because you don't love you. So if you don't love you, or if you don't even like you, how are you going to let somebody else love something you don't like? I'm helping you right there. So the first person got to love me is me. If I want somebody else to love me, I shouldn't expect you to care more about me than I care about me. Oh, I know I'm helping you, brother. All you got to do is put the plate out and catch it. It's out here. <laughs> if you don't love you, then why do you expect somebody else to come along and love you to show you how to love you? That don't make a bit of sense. That makes no sense. And that's what happened. We drift into mindsets, sister, because what happens is we give up on ourselves over time. You give up on yourself over time. Am I right about it? And you feel, as I, I think I might have said it last week, you feel nobody cares about you. You made some bad choices in life, and some folk messed over you, so you decided that, you know, nobody really loves me, but how are you going to love yourself if you don't think nobody loves you? Well, I came to give you some good news tonight. There is some people that God will put in your path that will love you. And they will genuinely love you without trying to get anything out of you. So, I, I got to go here now. I got to go here. One of the bad barometers that we use, we need to make an adjustment tonight is to judge how much you love me by what you give me. We, we, we miss that. Because you might not be able to give me something. I need to have sense enough to know that you love me without giving me something. I got to find people that will love me and don't have to have a sign in their hand. I need to find people that will love me and it's unconditional and I'm not waiting. You know, you don't have to prove it because if that's what means love, then I could, I could buy everybody's love. I could just give everybody some and make everybody believe I love them by doing deeds and things. And I appreciate everything anybody ever does for me. But if you can't do it, I have to realize everybody can't do that and I have to understand that that's not the 100% the proof of love. It, it, it's not. It's not. You got to love yourself. You got to care about you. So some people struggle loving themselves. And they don't believe other people can genuinely love them. Am I, am I helping you tonight? So the first thing, I, I don't want you to miss that. Love you. Now say, I love me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm so happy as can be. I love me. I love me to the point that I understand I'm not perfect. I want you to hear me now. 
So I got some balance. Therefore, pride don't show up. See, I can love me without letting pride in. You, you, come on now. I can love me without letting pride come in. Because if I don't love me, then I, I won't let you love me. And some people won't let you love them because they're not satisfied where they are. Lay hands on myself. All right. So did you, did you get it last week when I said I like myself because blank? You, you got that, right? All right, some of you might not have been here. I am an expert at whatever. Find out whatever it is you're good at. Apparently, you know what you're doing, you still got a job. Because if you didn't know what you were doing, and you were breaking things and knocking over stuff every other day, they get rid of you. They just find a way to get you out. If you're that clumsy, you can't carry things and can't communicate, and they just say, well, I'll tell you what, you'd be better off away from here. They'll give you some days off and just sick days and everything else. You just won't come back. So apparently there's something you know how to do if you're sought after. If they call you up and say, can you come in and work a few days? So that means it must be something you're good at. So don't shortchange yourself and act like you dumb and don't know nothing. I don't care who calls you dumb. Just because you can't work calculus, you're not dumb. You might not know all the, the formulas of algebra. You're not dumb. Don't think you're dumb. Don't think you're stupid and dumb because you took a GED. You're not dumb. Quit shortchanging yourself because you didn't do four years, six years, eight years of college. Quit telling yourself foolishness like that. You're not dumb because you work with little kids and you're an aide. You're not stupid. God's got to have somebody everywhere. Everywhere. And I love me, so he's, he selects what he wants me in life. See, we're going to get to that comparison tonight. We're we going to get there. So, my friends, or those that I'm acquainted with, will tell you some things that they know that I know how to do. They'll tell you. Find Smith. He can get it done. I don't let pride enter in. That's just the gift that God gave me. You see? When you're doing what you do down there where you do it at, don't worry about nobody that hates what you do because you know what you're doing. Some people hate what you do because you know what you're doing. Don't worry about that. So don't promote or propagate some false humility to try to get along with another person. I don't want to lose you right there. False humility is when I come around you, but I really don't want you to feel bad because I'm good at this, so I act like I don't know nothing while I'm around you to make you feel good. No, we're not going there. I want to be my best, so maybe if you see me doing my best, you'll want to do your best. Huh? I want to do my best. I want to do everything I do with the spirit of excellence if I can. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Whatever I do for the Lord, I want to do it with the spirit of excellence. I want to do it wholeheartedly. So, now that we've established that uh, we got the scriptures, you're not condemned, and he's going to take care of us. Those, those two scriptures, we got that. So, I want to ask you tonight, what does success mean to you? You ain't got an answer, but you can write it down. <clears throat> where is it, and I keep asking, where is it do you want to go in life? Or are you satisfied where you are? If you're satisfied where you are, understand me, then leave me alone if I'm trying to go higher. Did, did, you, did you get that? If you're satisfied where you are, then leave other people alone if they're trying to build and do things, if they're trying to go up, if they're trying to grow, if they're, if they're trying to, you know, purpose in their heart that they want to be better than where they were then leave them alone if you're happy. Leave them alone and don't envy them if you're satisfied. 
If you good. I think I said it on Sunday. I'm, I'm too old to try to move. I'm too old. I, I'm, I'm done for that. I got a place. Uh, been there for years. Ain't no point in me trying to find nothing to start some notes at be 90 years old trying to pay for a house. <laughs> I got three more notes. Man, you 95. You're not going to see the, 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 you're not going to enjoy the freedom of no house. If I go get a 30-year loan now, it's over. Don't you let me go get no 30-year loan. Talking about we want another house. I'm too old. I'm settled. I'm happy where I am. I'll paint and fix up what I got. Amen. That way won't nobody else come get it. Huh? But young people, you can do that. You young. I'm not trying to compete with younger folk. Man, get you a high rise if you can afford it. Go get it. Huh? If you can afford it, go get it. Man, I'm four years from social security. <laughs> I'm not going to fool with that. I'm not going to fool with it. I thank the Lord that he's brought me the scar and took care of us and gave me a roof over my head and a decent place to live. And I'm not comparing it with nobody. I don't care where I go. If I come in there and they got glass floors, oh, praise the Lord. The Lord is blessing you. I'm going back home to my tile on the floor, whatever it is. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We got to get out of that. I don't want to pay no $2,000, $3,000 a month, no. Take all of my little money I got saved up coming in. I'm paying my own retirement. It'll get all of that. And there I am, 90. Won't even know who I am. At 90, somebody else will be passing this church. Let's face it. Hey Amen. That's why we got to raise up somebody. We got to raise up people. Hey Amen. Drill, get your house in order, man. You, you never know, man. You might have to stay. You may have to stand back here and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm for real. But I, something just came over me when I said that. If we're caught up and gone as a church and the spirit of the Lord is taken out of this earth, this will no longer be a church. If it's not torn down or burned down, they'll turn it into something else. They might put rooms in here and rent it out. It's sad now the state is uh, about to try to get sued about putting in God we trust on something. It's, it's sad. It's a sad time we're living in. So somebody's got to be real about God. I mean, we can't play. We don't have time to play. And I just thought about that. So, uh, what does success mean to you? Now, you need to analyze success and, and, and not think it's just because you got a big bank account or, or a fat purse. I know a lot of people got that going on, but they're not happy. You know, I want to be happy. I don't want to just have money and no joy. I don't want to have money and scared to spend it. Some folks got money and scared to spend it. I want to save it all. I don't want to spend nothing. There was a rich guy, pro Professor, you probably know his name. He, he, he died. He, had, he was rich, but he died like a poor man. He didn't spend it. What was his name? One of the Rockefellers or somebody? I don't know. But anyway, it was somebody like they were, I mean, he, was, he, was, he, was, he had the goods, but he was cheap. He didn't want to spend a dime. Who was that? Oh, you had somebody like that? Well, you can't carry it to the grave. And your folk going to spend it if you don't. They going to spend it. I told, and people don't like to talk like this, but I told my wife, while we're young, if something happens to me, pray and marry again. Go on with your life. Don't sit around like, oh, I want to get married. I'm gone. You know? But now, 
if it's the wrong person, if it's any way I can come back. I'm coming back pulling toes, I'm, I'm pulling, I'm pinching, I'm doing anything I can do. If it's any way, if it's any way I can come back, you laying up on stuff I don't pay for, you the wrong one. I'm pinching, I'm pulling toes, thumping heads, and boop, who did that? You better get out of here, boy. <laughs> so, uh, success, you need success in your physical life, too. You, you need success in your physical life. See, a lot of times, church folk, we want to do everything by the Spirit. Oh, we so deep, you know, we can't even get along with folk. We so deep. Oh, we just so holy, you know, we, we can't laugh, we so holy, we just, you know, can't have fun, can't enjoy people, we just so holy, oh, Jesus, Jesus, everybody come around, you praying, oh, Jesus, oh, blah, 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 Jesus. you're not that holy, you're not that holy, he says be holy, and true enough, but he put people here for us to communicate with and deal with, and sometimes you'll miss the mark. Knowing you ain't got all that. You know that. Amen. So you need success in your health. You need to eat right. And a lot of times we don't. Now they told you you were diabetic. And you know you shouldn't be eating that pie. Huh? If you can't get on the treadmill, just walk. Do something. You need to be successful. This is the temple of God. And we got to take care of the temple. And if I know I got high blood crawling, there ain't no point in me eating pork chops and coming to the altar. Talking about pray for me. And you know good and well you didn't eat the pork chop and sausage. You know that. You know it works against you. Now you talking about I'm going to eat it by faith. No, you're not. you eating poison. You know it's killing you. Come on. And that hog, let me tell you something, uh, folks. That hog's something else. He's the best tasting joker out there, but he'll take you out of here. <laughs> that hog tastes better than any of them. Ain't nothing like a pork chop. But he will take you out of here. He's deceitful. So if I know it's working against me, if I know salt works against me, I don't sprinkle it. Come on, ain't no sprinkle it by faith. No, you're not. You're killing yourself. Then you want God to heal you and you done jumped off a bridge. Come on now. Quit sprinkling salt. If you know it works. So we got to have success in our physical life and our health. And we need energy. We need energy. We need to get our rest. You need rest. God created this whole world and then he rested. So I'm going to rest. I'm going to sit on the couch and nod. Huh? If I pull up sometimes and I'm tired, I'm going to sit in the truck and nod. I'm going to rest. If I ain't got anything to do when it's raining, I'm going to lay down a while. I'm going to rest. I'm not looking for something to do all the time. Come on now. You need energy, but you also need to rest. And success also works in your, your mental life. And I think I touched on this last week where you have to understand what's going on. You need rest so your brain can repair itself, one. You know, because if you don't get rest, you start thinking stuff and you start hearing things. And uh, what you say, ain't nobody said nothing to you. You hearing stuff. Ain't nobody talking to you. <laughs> you need some rest. You need rest so you won't get angry and fly off the handle. People can't say nothing to you. They say a little something to you. Well, I've been up all night long. Well, you should have went to bed. You should have gone to bed, you know. So you need rest. You need a success in your mental life, in your thinking. And you need, to, you need knowledge as well. Knowledge is power. And you need to, let me, let me say it like this. And, and you know, you got to realize, I'm an ignorant man. I'm like Peter and them. I'm, 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 they were fishermen. They were ignorant and unlearned. Jesus had to teach them so. Just bear with me. I'm going to try to get it over to you. So you have to understand you need, you need certain levels of knowledge to make you feel good about certain things. You know, and I think I mentioned this 
You cooking fish, spaghetti, and hamburgers every day, every week. You cooking the same stuff. Go get you some recipes and learn how to do something else. You know, make some souffles or something. Make, you know, make something you ain't never made. Make some taco spaghetti or something. Do something different. Grill some fish outside. What I'm saying is, turn the cooking channel on and learn. Watch Bobby play. See how they do things. What I'm saying is, don't have such a boring life. Learn things. Absorb information other than a phone and a tablet and foolishness and, and craziness on TV. And, and I, we got so much killing in our society now, I don't even want to watch killing on TV. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see cop shows and graphics what they shooting for. I don't want to see it. I watch them cooking channels and see what they cooking today. Learn something and feel good about yourself. And then you go in there and you make what they made or something different. And if you blow it up so much, try it again. Throw it in the garbage before anybody come over. They won't ever know. Amen. So, um, we need success in our spiritual life for sure. We got to have faith in God. We got to have values. Amen. And we certainly need to walk in peace. You need peace. You need to be at peace. I'm at peace. I'm at peace. I'm at peace. And you got to be at peace even though you're surrounded by people who are not at peace. You got to be at peace. You got you to learn to follow peace with all men. You got to learn to be at peace because sometimes uh, um, your, your mindset will connect to who you're associated with. You got to be careful who you're hanging out with if you're a weak person like that and you start acting like them or talking like them or saying what they say or falling in the same thing, you know. If I get around people, and, and especially people that don't have faith, they oh, I don't know what we're going to do. Everything going up so high. Child, I don't know how we're going to live. How do you expect us to live? I don't know. You hush. You have got three checks. Stimulus. You got all, you hush. You be quiet. You done got all this money, and you talking about you don't know how you're going to make it? You're going to make it like you've been making it. You ain't lost no uh, meals. So I don't want to talk to people that's, that's talking like that. I want to wake up every day with hallelujah, thank you, God, and he's giving me new mercies every day, so I get a chance to give him new praises every day. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy. But you hang out with folk, oh, man, gas going to be. Gas. Some of y'all pumping gas and you didn't even know it was three dollars some a gallon. You've been pumping. You never quit pumping it until they told you it was three dollars and some a gallon. You never quit pumping it. You never thought about it. You just pump it and you realize, hmm, I'm only getting a half a tank now. I used to get more than that. That's all you know. And you drive away. What do you care? As long as God's taking care of you, pray to God, keep walking, keep moving, and don't sit around and hold conversation with negative people that pull you down in a hole, pull you down in a place, you know. And these folks that don't know how they're going to make it and they done got three checks and stuff, don't even talk. Don't talk to me. You done got paid. Some of that my money. God bless you. So, you also need success in your, your personal life, your character. How do you carry yourself? What do people say uh, the first impression of you from a stranger? That's important. The first impression of you from a stranger is very important. People that don't know you, never seen you before, and never heard anything come out of your mouth, they're reading you and they're, they're trying to figure out what type of person you are, and their first impression of you is very important. Amen. And all of that depends on what you think about you. What you think about you. What are you telling yourself? Amen. Success in your relationships. How you help people. You've heard me say this before. Uh, we're starting to eat out again. You sit there and, and you have the waitress or waiter walking back and forth getting your stuff, and then you're going to give them 
You don't want to help nobody. You got to change your mindset. And remember, somewhere along the way in life, somebody helped me. So I believe I'll help somebody else. Since they're only making 4 or $5 an hour and you making 25 or whatever, can't you help them? You, you've walked them all night, got them giving you tea and coke and some stuff you don't even want. You just want to see them walk. <laughs> can, I, can I have some mustard? And they bring it out and you taste that. You really didn't want that. Then you ask for something else. Can I have some rolls? Can I have some butter? You know, think about it. If you had to do that walking, and then when it's time for tip, you don't want to give nothing. God's looking at you. He's watching you. Suppose you had the job. Everybody can't do what you do. Everybody can't teach. Everybody can't be what you are. Everybody can't be a principal or a superintendent. Everybody can't be what you are. Everybody can't be a nurse. Everybody can't be retired and got money. Everybody can't be that. So there, there's, there's a thing I want to know. Is your tank of empathy running on empty? Well, Pastor, I don't know what empathy is. You just have to break that down. Somebody tell us what empathy is. Don't look it up. Don't Google it. Come on, you supposed to know it. He didn't Google it. The ability or the potential to put yourself in another person's place. It's like compassion to try to live out what they're dealing with. So if you had two kids and were working for $5 an hour and that's all you knew how to do, wouldn't you want somebody to tip you? Man, if I was a waiter and that's all I knew how to do, Boy, I come to your table grinning harder than a mule eating briars. Man, I'll be laughing and grinning with you. Well, oh, how you doing? Anything else I can get you tonight? Oh, well, uh, God bless you. God bless you. We might even have a prayer. <laughs> you know, it's how you carry yourself. And this is the way I am. When they have a nasty attitude and wait on my table, and, and I don't enjoy my food. That's just how I am. I can't enjoy my food when you're serving me and it's nasty. Well, it's the same thing. I'm the pastor of the church. You can't enjoy your food if I'm serving you in a nasty way. You don't enjoy your food. Huh? And I'm saying I got to pay my money for somebody who got an attitude problem, who really need to be fired. Sometimes they really need to be fired. <laughs> but there's some that go over and beyond to be kind. So you need to be kind to them. Is six of you all at the table, man? Come up with ten or fifteen dollars. Six dollars. <laughs> Get out of there. You want God to bless you? Get out of there. Six dollars. It's six of us. Six dollars. <laughs> Come on now, let's be better than that. In fact, I want to be a blessing to the point when I walk in the door, they remember that man right there. They, you, you want to get good service? Tip them real good. They'll know your name when you come in. They'll race to get to you. Amen. See, I'm not going to finish this. We're going to do part five next week. Continue. Amen. Uh, I think I can take three more football minutes. So, all right, let's jot this down. Let's jot this down. One, stop comparing yourself to other people. I've told you that over and over and over. And if you're not careful, social media is one of the worst places to compare yourself with somebody because I'm like Smith Wigglesworth now. It's full of lies. It's full of lies. A lot of that stuff you're seeing is not true. Some of it is. Thank God for social media that we can communicate and connect with people in a godly fashion. Amen. So, you know, there will always be some people that will have what you don't have, know what you don't know, and will look like you can't look. There will be people like that. I've accepted that. When I was growing up a teenager, my hair came down to here. Look at it now. That's, I mean, 
I got to accept that. You're not going to look like you always look. Accept the fact you're getting older. I didn't say old, I said older. Accept the fact that you ain't got it like you had it. Accept the fact when you came to the Lord that you can't drop it like it's hot no more. Accept the fact. Just accept the fact. You ain't what you were. Come on now. You a grandma. Accept the fact. Quit playing. We went to get some fireworks, and we were in a building at the firework place where they had humongous, I mean, from here to across the road, a big place. And so these grandmas was up there in a balcony. And you know me, I said, are y'all about to throw bees down? <laughs> some grandmas, just laughing, having fun. These some older women, Caucasian women. So they start throwing plates. <laughs> that's, all, that's all they had. But the point is, you can't do what people did once they were your age at one point. You done. Some things we just done. You know. So you don't have to compare yourself with a, a, a brother with a, a 18 year old who puts on some spandex and jog around the corner and then you're going to try it. Y'all better call 911. <laughs> you better call 911. Stay in your league. Stay in your league. One time I was gonna race Chad, I thought, and then I got out. I wasn't, it was probably 10 years ago. And I got out like I used to. And we took off, but my legs would not do what they used to do. So I accept the fact. I'm not what I was. So don't compare yourself with a younger generation and worry about you can't be what they are and you can't do them. And I wish I had to live my life a certain way and I had these children and Bubba left me and I couldn't go to school and they doing well. Bubba left you, but you still doing good. Don't worry about Bubba. Don't worry about all that. Let people live the life that they have. You've been given a chance at life that somebody else didn't get. Love the life God gave you and let them live the life they have. How simple can I put that? You know. I don't, you know, whatever. There's people going to have what you don't have. You know, don't compare yourself. Don't worry about that. Back in the days, everybody had, you know, it, it was it was a, a season of a certain thing. You know, so I'm saying, probably remember this. You, you know, the old longer card, the diamond in the back, sunroof top, huh? White gangster, white wall ties. When you had that, man, you listen. They knew you coming. They knew when you were coming down the street. And then you open the door, you can smell that. We call it pimp oil. You can smell <laughs> smell that incense. It's loud, man. It was loud. But that was the way they did it then. That was the way it was done then. I remember cars come down the road, you can smell the fragrance coming out of the car, they passing by. Am I right about it? But we don't have to compare ourselves to nobody, to no relative, to nobody. Let them have whatever they want and you have whatever God gives you. Huh? Now, the second thing I want to give you real quick, stop pulling yourself down. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Why do you keep putting yourself down? Why do you keep telling yourself you can't? Why do you keep telling yourself you're not good enough? Why do you keep telling yourself you don't know how? Why do you keep telling yourself, um, I'm afraid to try, I might mess up. If I mess up, I try again. Huh? Come on now. If you, if you make a cake you never made before, and it swells up real big and then fall in the middle. Throw it away and make you another. Yeah, who cares? Don't worry about people laughing at you or making fun of you. You don't have to worry about that. The life you save and the life you love may be your own. Huh? So, don't pull yourself down. There's no way to repair your self-esteem 
or your self-worth if you keep negative phrases in your mouth. You got to get rid of the negative phrase. In fact, you ought to get a card and start writing stuff on a card just between you and yourself and the Lord saying, I'm somebody. I'm all right. For Jerry, get in the mirror and say, I'm a good looking man. Get in the mirror and say it, bro. Huh? Oh, he did it when he came in. Say, hey, I'm a good-looking man, you know. See, I'm this way. Now, this is how I work. If you need some tea, go get you some tea. Don't worry about it. Man, if you want some tea now. See, y'all, I'm, I'm being for real. And the reason I say that, all of my children inherited our crooked teeth or whatever, so for their self-esteem, we got them all braces. You understand? You try to do that for your kids. All three of them. And I told one of them, you get small with me, you got a hot dog in mouth. <laughs> but, but I said that to say this. You can do something for your own self-esteem. You know, don't wait on all your teeth to fall out before you go to the dentist. Man, go down there and start working on them. Look here, brother. I need three right here. Can you help me? Come on, man, y'all. And then you'll feel better about yourself. You'll feel better about your smile. I'm, I, am I telling you the truth? I mean, we laughing about it, but it's the truth anyway. I'm telling you the truth. So, therefore, you know, you can feel better about yourself. I would start taking care of mine when I was born up. Am I right? I probably got a fifteen thousand dollar smile right now. <laughs> I'm just saying. I got to get out of here, y'all. See, y'all messing up, y'all. Y'all messing me up. Okay. Um, I would make a list of positive things about myself. You ain't got to share it with nobody. You ain't got to tell nobody. But the things that you know that are working for you. Because if you want to go somewhere from here, you at least got to know where you've been. You know, jot down some things, some stuff you know. If you were great in school and good in math and good in reading, you know, some people could read, but they couldn't comprehend. You know, sit there and read all day long. What you read? I don't know what I read. It didn't, it didn't sink because they lacked the cognitive skills to hold the information. Or either they're distracted to the point that their brain doesn't align. See, your brain is complex. And if you're a sad person, it could be that it's not releasing the dopamine, the chemical that makes you happy. So man got smart enough to say, well, we're going to create some pills and give you a little bit of that and a little bit of this and so we can make you happy. Well, they give you the wrong stuff and then you, you, you're too happy. <laughs> now you want to run up down the street. <laughs> so then they have to balance it out. Then they give you the wrong stuff and then you're just ready to leave here. You're ready to go. You're tired of everything. That's why you got to trust in God. Depend on the Lord. And ask the Lord to restore your joy. The devil tried to take it from you, but God will restore your joy. The devil tried to kill your joy by telling you all the failures that you did and all the stuff and the reason your children ain't this and because of what you did. No, it's not. It's because of the choices they made. So quit uh, putting that gun in your head saying, what, you, what the devil saying you did and you didn't raise them right. If you had a, if you had a done this and had a done that, then they wouldn't be doing this. If you did all you know to do, then that's all you can do. All you can do is put them on the altar and say, Lord, they, they belong to you. I give them to you. I give them to you. And, and that's why I don't talk about nobody's kids or how they're living because mine ain't through living yet. So I'm not finna talk about your, you know, your child ain't no good. Your child in the streets. 
Well, mine, I got three ain't through living yet. So you got to be careful what you let come out of your mouth, you know, and, and how you voice your opinion about people. And, and, and church folks shouldn't be talking about each other, no way. Come on now. I'm going to make a move, y'all. We're going to get through here tonight. We done. And we'll pick up next Wednesday on another part. Might be part five, continue. But I appreciate all of you tonight. Thank God for you. God is great and greatly to be.